And in 1995, the Srebrenica massacre began. Bosnian Serb forces killed more than 8,000 Muslim men and boys in the largest genocide in Europe since the Second World War Holocaust. Aida Cherkis is a Bosnian journalist and survivor of the siege of Sarajevo. We can speak to her now. Good morning, Aida. Good morning. It's one of those, I think Srebrenica as a phrase, just as a word, is, is one of the things that many people just have in their, their minds even now, but maybe don't know the full details. What exactly happened on that day? Srebrenica is an enclave in, was an enclave actually, it's a small town in, uh, in eastern Bosnia and it was encircled throughout the war by Bosnian Serb forces. There were about 40,000 uh, mainly Muslim Bosniaks living there, plus all the refugees from the uh, surrounding villages. And um, because it was a, such a civilian um, um, it, it was a place where all the civilian kind of poured uh, from the neighboring villages. Uh, the United Nations declared Srebrenica a UN safe zone and sent some UN blue helmets to protect it. However, that didn't work in 1995. Uh, Bosnian Serb forces attacked the, the, the town and kind of ran it over together with the UN uh, blue helmets. So it, they separated men from women. Uh, the women and the small children were sent uh, to, to another city. The Dutch soldiers were almost taken hostage, so to say, and the men were executed systematically one by one. Uh, and what was the what was the reasoning? I mean, this sort of act has no reason for it. But what was what were they trying to achieve by this? Land grab. It's, it was pure land grab and ethnic cleansing. You know, when you have a population exclusively controlling one one territory, it can pretty much do whatever it, it wants. However, uh, um, since they have surrounded the entire territory around Srebrenica, um, it was ready to be annexed to neighboring Serbia, except these people, these 40,000 people in, in Srebrenica were in the way. So instead of just letting them go, which were transferring them somewhere or just leaving them be, um, they killed them. Can you remember where you were when you heard of the extent of the of the massacre? Aida? Well, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning, it wasn't even known because nobody could believe uh, that this can happen in Europe after the Second World War. So we didn't really think I was in Sarajevo. We didn't really think that this was possible. Um, there were people missing, you know, when they were arriving with buses to, to the neighboring town of Tuzla, only women arrived. We all thought that the men were, I don't know, held uh, somewhere in prisons or in camps and, and so on. Uh, um, so, so the Red Cross was sent to see how they are. Well, they didn't find them. And for a very long time, I think about two months, nobody believed that these people could have been so systematically executed. That came out only somewhere around October uh, um, almost November. Yeah, what an extraordinary uh, story. Aida, thank you so much for taking the time to tell it again for us this morning. That's Aida Cherk is there, Bosnian journalist and survivor of the siege of Sarajevo.